the entrance and the font. Let us sing to the Lord that He has gracious to the Christ. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we give the grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who have come to know the grace of the Lord's resurrection may, through the love of the Spirit, ourselves rise to newness of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, Get up and head south on the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert route. So he got up and set out. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, that is, the queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury, who had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated on his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, Go and join up with that chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet, who said, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I, unless someone instructs me? So he invited Philip to get in and sit with him. This was the scripture passage he was reading. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and as a lamb before his shearing he was silent, he, so he opened not his mouth. In his humility, justice was denied him. Who will tell of his posterity, for his life is taken from the earth? Then the eunuch said to Philip in reply, I beg you, about whom is the prophet saying this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this scripture passage, he proclaimed Jesus to him. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, there is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? Then he ordered the chariot to stop, and Philip and the eunuch both went down into the water, and he baptized him. When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, but continued on his way rejoicing. Philip came to Azutis and went about proclaiming the good news to all the towns until he reached Caesarea. The word of the Lord. The responsorial song, let all the earth cry out to 
God with joy. Blessed our God, you peoples, loudly sound his praise. He has given life to our souls and has not let our feet slip. But our holy earth cry out to God with joy. Hear now, all you who fear God, while I declare what he has done for me. When I appealed to him in words, praise was on the tip of my tongue. And the holy earth cry out to God with joy. Blessed be God who refuses me not, my prayer or his kindness. But I will not really cry out to God. with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. First reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we've got Philip, who is serving as an evangelist, bringing the gospel to a court official from Ethiopia, and he's rightly prepared for it. He knows how to explain the scriptures to open the Ethiopian's mind up to understand and come to faith in Jesus, and also it helps to know it's not the first time he's done this. He's a deacon. He's also a husband, and he's also a father. Where do you suppose his first missionary activity took place? As a husband and as a father. Now, being a deacon has an important responsibility to it, like being a priest does, like being a bishop does, but you know, then a lot of the deacons were coming from, you know, Married men, families, like this guy over here. <laughs> but, you know, after all that learning, after spending all that time being evangelized, there's a point at which, for all of us, especially I'm going to look at those who are fathers and husbands, there's a point at which that evangelizing needs to go from you, from your having received it, to your starting to give it, and the first missionary field is in your. Is your faith in Christ being deepened and strengthened? And is it being passed on to those who live with you under your roof? Or maybe even they're grown and moved on, but they're still your sons and daughters, and they still need to receive the gift of faith from you, especially in our day and time when so many of our young people 
have been pulled away from their faith by this highly secularized, atheistic, agnostic, rebellious society. There are so many who need to have the gift of faith brought back to them again. And a starting point needs to be husband, father, to his wife, to his children, and then, you know, together as husband and wife, mother and father, to their children together. That gift of the gospel needs to be passed along. And if you remember something that I have spoken of so many times, each and every single one of your homes is meant to be a domestic, as in under your roof, church. Primary evangelist in that church is husband and father in union with wife and mother to their sons and daughters, to their grandsons and granddaughters, and if you live long enough, to your great-grandsons and great-granddaughters until you're no longer breathing here on planet Earth. There is an immense gift that needs to get passed down from generation to generation to generation, a primary and in our day, unfortunately, too often forgotten missionary field is in the home. Philip is your role model. He evangelized his home first and was ready, prepared for being able to evangelize someone from outside the family. Start at home. Give the gift of faith in Christ to those entrusted to your care. By living Christ's commandment of love, the world might believe in him as Lord and Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. That the good news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection may be proclaimed to the ends of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our nation may, may be mindful of the ways in which its citizens should look after each other with care, respect, and dignity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That priests, during this pandemic, will be created in their pastoral care for those entrusted to them, showing concern, love, and respect. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been made ill by the coronavirus, for all who care for them, and for the governments and people of the world, that we may experience the healing mercy of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Prayer. For these and for all the intentions in our parish for prayer and for the repose of the soul of Betty Moser, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Father, let the whole of creation rejoice in the Easter life of your Son, so that his spirit renews the face of the earth through Christ our Lord. Praise and glory of his name, a heart of good and good of all of the Holy Church. 
graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord will be with you. And with your spirit. We lift up your hearts. We lift up the hearts of the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time of evolved to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending of your glory as we out end they claim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, our full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, the Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Come and we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Peter our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. 
and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. To live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Well, that of God. takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. be present to your people, we pray, O oh Lord, and lead those who have in view with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Go forth, the Master's in you. Thanks be to God.